Okay, so as a very basic first step here, let's get some data to be displayed on the screen. And for that, we'll need some data to actually work with. And instead of me typing everything out and then you pausing and copying it down, what you can do instead is come to the repo for the series and get the data from here. So come over to my GitHub, it's github.com slash chanky, and we wanna be at the ng2cribs repo. So this is the final state of the application here, and what we have is in the source directory, we've got this data directory. So let's go there, and here I've got this cribs.json file, and this is just some very basic data for our application. So we can go and view the raw data, and let's just select everything and copy it. And then let's go over to VS Code, and then here within the app directory, let's create a new folder, and let's call this data. And within here, let's create a new file and call it cribs.ts. So you'll notice this is a TypeScript file that I've just created here, whereas in the repo, what we've got is a JSON file. So we've got cribs.json over here, but here I'm creating a TypeScript file. That's because I wanna demonstrate two different ways we can consume this data. And in the first way, we'll just work with our data locally. And to do that, we have to export this data from this file. And we also have to say that it's a constant and we'll give it a name and we'll call it cribs. So so we'll export a constant called cribs and then we'll paste in our data and that's going to be all of the real estate listing data that we need for now. Okay, so let's save this and let's come over here to our cribs listing component. So again, this is kind of the top level component as far as listing out our real estate data is concerned. And since we're exporting our cribs data here, we can import it now in our component. So let's come over here and we'll say import cribs from and then we want to say we want to go one level up and then into the data directory and we want to look for it in our cribs.ts file and notice here that when we do our imports we don't have to put .ts rather it's just the name of the file before the extension all right so now that we're bringing in that data we have to create a member here on our cribs listing component class and so what we want is a local member that is an array and we can call it cribs and why don't we give it a type we'll say that it's an array and for now let's pass in a type hint of any. So we're going to say that our cribs property here is going to be an array and the elements within that array, for now, we're just going to say that they can be anything. So we're not saying that they need to be strings or numbers or anything like that. Right now, we're just saying it can be anything. And then right away, what we can do is we can assign this cribs property, so this local cribs property, to that cribs data that we're bringing in. So we're importing some cribs data and we're assigning it to this cribs local property. Okay, so why don't we make a quick check just to be sure this is coming through. So let's go over to the HTML file for our components. I'll get rid of what's there already. And I'm just going to put out a pre-tag now. And within that pre-tag, what I wanna do is template out that data. So I'm going to template out our cribs and I'm going to say that I wanna view it as JSON. So Angular 2 gives us a number of what are called pipes. So we can just supply the pipe character and then we can use an identifier for the pipe that we want to use. And in this case, it's the JSON pipe that comes from Angular 2. And now to have this component be displayed, we're going to actually have to make use of it. So what I mean by that is over here, we've got this component living on this selector of app-crib-listing. And since this cribs listing component is a child of our root component, it's a child of our top level component, well, we can use this selector as an element in that top level component so that we can actually see this cribs listing component. So what we can do for that is come over here to our app.component html and i'll just get rid of what's there and instead i'll put in the element app dash crib dash listing okay so we'll save that and in case you stop the application at some point what we can do is serve it again so you can come over to your application directory in the console and do ng serve Okay, cool, so it looks like it's being served up and now we can go over to the browser and try to pull up localhost 4200. So if we go to localhost 4200, what we see is our data and that's exactly what we would expect to see here. So again, in our app-crib-listing component, what we're doing is we're putting that data out on the screen in a simple pre-tag like this. Okay, so that's how we would display all of our data at once. So if we had an array of data like we do here, that's how we would get everything onto the screen. But this really isn't the way that we'd want to work with a collection of data. Instead, what we need is a lot more control over how we can manipulate the data on the screen. And when we have a collection of data like this, typically what we want to do is list it out in some fashion. So that might involve different things like displaying an unordered list of our data or having something like a card for each of the items in our collection. 
And that's what we'll do in our case. We'll create a card for each of these items. So for each of these items in our array of data, we want to have a card that's kind of interactive and shows various things. It'll show things like the type of real estate listing it is, the price, the address, and so on. And what we want to do is just provide a single template for that. So just one bit of HTML that can be reused for all of the items in our collection. And in that way, we don't have to be repeating ourselves. We don't have to duplicate HTML for each of the items in the collection. And the way that we can do that in Angular 2 is with a directive called ng4. So let's come over here and let's just get a sense of how this works. So ng4 is Angular 2's repeater implementation. And so what it looks like is you use the ng4 directive. So you call the directive with star and you say ng4. So that's the directive name. And then you say that you want to loop over some collection. And in this case, it's our cribs collection. But what we have to do to be able to get access to each of the items in this collection is put a local variable here. So what we do is we say let crib of cribs. So for each of the items in our cribs array, we're going to get access to it via our crib local variable here. And so let's see what that means exactly. What I'll do down here is I'll just put in an H3 and then let's put out the address for each of the listings. So since we have access to each of the items in the array via this local variable called crib, let's say crib.address. And that is going to display the address for each of them. So let's see this at work now. Come back over to the browser and wait for it to refresh. And just like we'd expect, we've got six addresses here on the screen. So notice that I didn't have to supply a div with an H3 for each of those six items. Rather, I've got a single template that uses a repeater so that we can loop over that data and provide a common template for each item. And of course, we can access other properties. So we might want to see the price. So we can come over and say crib.price. And maybe we want to get the type as well. All right, so we're getting our data now on the screen, but this doesn't really look a whole lot like our final application does. So let's take some steps to get there. The first thing we'll want to do is get the CSS for Bootstrap so that we have some styling. So you can either go to getbootstrap.com and you can copy over the CSS link here and bring it into your project. But what we can do instead is get it from NPM. So what I'll do is go over to the terminal and I can open up a new window here and go over to the project directory. So for me, that's at the desktop slash ng2 cribs. And what we'll do now is install bootstrap. So npm install bootstrap and we'll save that to our package.json file. Okay, so it's saved now. And now let's go back over to VS Code. And what we can do is register it in our Angular CLI configuration. So let's go to the angular-cli.json file. That's right at the root of the project here. And we've got this styles array. So this styles array is where we can tell our Angular project that we've got some styles that we want to use. And the first one that's in here is this styles.css file. And that maps to this file over here, styles.css. We can also tell it that we want to look into the node modules directory. So we'll say go to node modules, go to bootstrap, and look in the dist folder under CSS, and let's get bootstrap. And we'll get the minified version .min.css. So let's save that and let's take a look in the browser now. So back over in our project, nothing has changed, nothing has refreshed. What we might need to do is give the project a restart. So let's go back over to the terminal again. And over here, let's kill this process. So I'll do control C on the Mac and then we'll do ng serve once more. Okay, so let's take a look now. So back over here, we can see that it restarted for us and we've got a different font. We've got the font that comes from Bootstrap. All right, so now we know how to repeat over data. We've got some styling in place that will help us to get to our final look and feel. So in the next video, we'll create another component which will essentially just be a presentational one. It'll be a presentational component to show our listing cards.